uh, document camera and then we will come back to this um, the next part okay not now correct focusing. I'm going to write about mitochondria. Could you clearly see? Okay. Victoria, Sugarland, Sink Orange. Could you see the letters clearly? Yes. This one, the second one. This also you can see, right? Okay. I'll, uh, we will discuss about, uh, there are two topics, and one is the mitochondria, is the one of the subcellular organelle. You see this cell, and we did study about the membrane earlier, biomembrane or biological membrane, how this membrane is made up of, and then the nucleus we are going to see today, and the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm like a, a juice-like thing or soup, and uh, there are cytoplasm organelles like uh, lysosomes and uh, mitochondria, and then centrioles and, and Golgi apparatus, and other cytoplasmic inclusions, okay. Also, we did study about the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. That one is the uh, smooth ER, another one is the rough ER, Yes, that's what the, with the ribosomes, which is attached to it, and then free-floating ribosomes, okay? So, we are seeing the cell. We have not come out of the cell. Still, we are in the cell, okay? We are going to see uh, the organelles of this will predominate depending upon the tissues. In some tissues, the tissue is lazy. It won't do any work. You just do the only transport mechanism. For that, there is not much of a particular organelle is not needed here. For example, in the protein synthesis, it's not necessary. When compared to liver cells, yes, liver cells produce large amount of protein. There, the endoplasm, reticulum, ribosomes are more predominantly in, in, in action like that, okay? Whereas, uh, the mitochondria is also, is been more number suppose in the liver cells where the high metabolic activity is going on. So you have more of this mitochondria increased number. In certain types of tissues or the cells, you know, you have to have a destruction for some, for example, in phagocytosis or phagocytes, which is present in the RBC, right? White blood cells. What is the function of white blood cells? White blood cells are the soldiers of our body or the blood. What the soldiers will do will defend our system. So, if any foreign particle or bacteria or virus which invade us and this white cell will engulf it, it will eat. How it will eat? 
if that suppose it is the white cell and then uh, if the nucleus and it will bulge it, it will change its shape and then it will get this uh, uh, bacteria virus getting into it and then it encircle a vacuole the lysosome will act so more of lysosomes are will break down of this so if you want to kill this foreign particle you need more of lysosomes so that particular tissue will have more predominant of lysosomes so if you study in the histology class we are studying the cell because once you study the cell, then you can uh, uh, comprehend, mm, comprehensive knowledge of the tissues. Tissues is made up of cells. There are different types of cells will constitute different types of tissues. Okay, and So that's the second part, tissues we will study a bit later. But now you have to study the cells. Suppose if you want to go uh, on to build a house, what you will do? Buy tiles and floorings and all uh, the pipelines, everything, right? So, you don't need one particular tiles for matching all. You cannot do bathroom tile into your into your house, the other part where, where you have a family room. No, bathroom tiles go bathroom. So, you, are, you can't keep the bathtub and, 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 and the decorating and things and you can't keep it in the family hall. It's not. It's a kitchen. That sink and kitchen uh, table top and everything is different when compared to the another part of the house. The same thing in the cells. You have different types of cells. It's different function. Kidney cells different from liver cells. Liver cells different from uh, you have you know, absorptive cells or intestinal cells. And intestinal cells is different from brain cells, neurons. Okay. So it may vary. So our entire purpose of this uh, lecture is they characterize those tissues individually. That's what we are going to see. Before that, you should understand the logic behind it. Because in the textbook, they will say, hey, first chapter, second chapter, they will go one by one. But if you think uh, in, a, in a comprehensive way, you, the cell type may vary in individual cells. If you understand that principle, the class is, is easy to understand. Okay, okay. Do you follow? So that's why I'm giving uh, extensive, uh, you know, information on the cells now. So now you know about the some cells uh, high metabolic activity where you have excess of mitochondria. Number of mitochondria per cell is more for those cells. For example, another one, RBC, red blood cells, which we are going to see now. Red blood cells, they don't have nucleus. It's one other, one other very important part. There is no need because what is the function of RBC? Carry it's a carry oxygen. There's nothing to reproduce our mitosis. If you get the mitosis of a red blood cell, that is abnormal. That is abnormal. That constitute in a in a blood cell. That's maybe cancer type. Different types. It will go on that. We are not talking about that right now. But general in the normal circumstances, RBC will the function will do on the transport. Like that, this organelle, whatever we are seeing in the one cell, particular cell, if I'm seeing these are the cells, cells constitute which you have done perhaps in a, in a different, uh, you know, um, situations. For example, um, you know, each tissue will have its own function. That function depends upon the organelles, type of organelles which is present inside the cells, individual cells. Do you follow now? So now, the mitochondria we will see about it and characteristic, and then we will go on to the next one. In the light microscope, can we see? I put LM, other, uh, you know, I keep it like that. Okay. LM for light microscopy. And then the light microscope, you cannot see. The, I'm talking about mitochondria. Mitochondria. Looks like a, like a spherical and light microscopy, right? It's just a spherical granules. That's what it looks like. Sometimes it looks like a rods in light microscope, okay? And present in the cytoplasm. 
that's the location. In the electron microscopy, I put the short version is the EM, electron microscopy. It looks like a typical oval shape. It's an oval shape or tubular structure. Tubular structure. Okay. And they also have a cristae. If you see the structure like this, it is going like this, the outer membrane of mitochondria and there's an inner membrane will go like this, folding like this, it will go like this. Okay. So this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane, this is outer and inner. You can clearly see under the microscope, on the electron microscopy. When this mito mitochondria, what is the function of this mitochondria again? Function is producing ATP through respiratory chain, right? Uh, like you can call it as a TCA cycle, right? Res respiration, respiration of oxygen. The oxygen is coming here and then uh, it is being reduced with the hydrogen and the water is being produced. The electron transport chain that uses this oxygen, oxygen with electron transport chain, electron transport chain will produce ATP and thereby the ATP is the one which is the powerhouse of the cell because more of energy which is being produced from the mitochondria. So all these enzymes are present, TCA cycle enzyme, tricarboxylic acid or citric acid cycle enzymes are present in mitochondria. And then the electron transport chain which is having all the electron, um, the intermediate of iron sulfur proteins which will, which will transfer the electrons and, and thereby it releases the energy. That energy is being used by ADP to form ATP. So this process, everything is taking place in, in the mitochondria. Okay. So the, the active cells, active cells, this mitochondria is dividing. Otherwise, we call it as a mito, could you see? Okay. Mitochondria biogenesis, bio Genesis. So this is very important. Sometimes uh, the drug will uncouple the oxidative phosphorylation or the ATP. There's a blockage here, and thereby the mitochondria start a swelling. Instead of taking this rod shape, it may instead of taking I'll just draw a separate figure. It goes like this. Okay. So the cristae is all over the place, but this is the normal one. This is the normal one where you have a cristae and everything normal and this is abnormal, meaning it's a swelling of mitochondria during the uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation or, or cyanide poisoning or any other like a DNP dinitrophenol and those are sometimes you know you have a painkiller, you are eating the painkiller, you have a headache another painkiller that might also getting into the uncoupling that may use a temporary the swelling of mitochondria and thereby it reduces uh, the, the ATP productions over there and, and then stop. In cyanide poisoning, it will stop and then the poison the death will occur. So all this drug will change the mitochondrial status. So why I am saying this, if you are going to be a forensic pathologist or if you go on forensic science and if you have a part of autopsy and then you can check that one out, sometime if the, that particular uh, person is poisoned or not, you can check the electron micrograph of uh, that particular tissue that will indicate whether that uh, person is poisoned or not because the mitochondria is another sensitive issue for the poisons. That's what I want to make a note. Okay, the next one, the organelle which we have to study, I think I stopped in the class in the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi complex. We'll see about the Golgi complex. Okay, light microscope, LG, or the Golgi complex. You have the shape vary for this. Shape may vary. Okay. And it is formed the reticular network. And that's what is budding off. Okay. That is the uh, reticulum. Reticulum. That probably reticulum is nothing but a network process which is present in the inside the cytoplasm. Okay. It looks like a solid particle like uh, I'll, I'll show in a, in a way, see if uh, the plates it go on horizontal but the edge of the plate is bulging like this, 
and then it goes like this, and then it's bulging of that one. So like this, there are several of them, compressed in the middle, but in the bulging in the, in the edges. So another one which is going like this. So this part of the Golgi apparatus, you know, the bulging part is bud off. Uh, eventually, it is coming outside that one, and 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 then it contains certain type of enzymes. Okay, and uh, uh, this present near nucleus, the location where it locate in the in the cell near nucleus, nucleus. Okay. On the apical end of the nucleus. What is the apical end of the nucleus? I'll draw now a cell, and this is the nucleus. If you see the cell, and this is the basal cell, probably this is attached to another tissue, maybe. So this is the basal. This is the apical or free surface, free surface or apical. This this side of the cell, this top of the cell. So it present not here. This Golgi is present over here, at the top of that one. So you have to see the cells wherever there's a free surface, and behind that, and below that, you will find. Not here you have other tissues. Don't worry about this. This is the basal cells. It won't present, but it is present over here. And this is near the nucleus, and, 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 and this Golgi. The main purpose is to uh, synthesize certain Synthesis carbohydrates for carb for proteins, like an industry. It synthesizes a carbohydrate and then attached to the protein molecule, and especially for the glycoprotein. Glycoprotein. So the cell is synthesizing the protein, but the glyco or the carbohydrate moiety is synthesized in Golgi apparatus, and then that is uh, that is used for secretory cells. You know, I mentioned earlier, there are certain types of cells that need a specialization. Some experts, if you want to develop a computer software company, what do you need to do? What type of personnel you have to employ for that company? Need more of programmer, right? Software programmer, you know, the different type of database entry level. So you, you, don't, you don't appoint a cook for that software company. Because cook is good for restaurant and not for software company. So you have to select like that here in this, uh, if this Golgi apparatus will do a synthesis of glycoprotein and synthesis. So it predominant, the glyco, uh, Golgi complex predominant in secretory cell. Secretion. Secretion is a function, okay, function of certain type of tissue. We will see that later on. But these cells, secretory cells will provide are maximum amount of Golgi. Maximum amount of Golgi. Golgi complex, that's why it's a Golgi complex. So depending upon the function, you have got the number of Golgi apparatus <coughs> increase. Okay? So now, we'll go on to the next one. Golgi, lysosomes. Tens of lysosomes, we'll go, that's an interesting one. Lysosomes where? Which tissues may have lysosomes? Um, lytic enzymes, secretions, and those tissues will have the lysosomes more. I explained earlier, phagocytosis is one of the example. The another one which you think in your eyelid, you know, when you get a, a dust particle getting into your eye, what will happen? Water? You're not crying. You are crying. The water is coming, right, from the eye. So there are different types of that. That's th that one, the water is getting into the eyes and eyelids become uh, more of a secretion of that. That it, it instantaneously with histamine secretion with the mast cells and that releases of more of vasodilators where the blood flow will come and then more secretion of the fluid will come up. That fluid contains more amount of Lysosomal lytic enzymes. The lytic enzymes will actually cleave. You, if you see the immunology, we have studied all the innate immunity in that the body's defense mechanism. One of the mechanism is the lytic action, which is coming out. So the lysosome is the one with the more of secretion on that part. And one of the stories I don't know whether you heard 
it is a it's a myth or not um, if you cry for in a in a pain or a sorrow mood okay so you get an the uh, tears are coming from the near the nose near the nose of that one okay so if you if you happen to have um, you know of very tears is coming when you are so happy so you uh, you you feel good some pleasant experience also you you are going to cry in both occasions they used to say when you cry the tear is coming during your sorrowful mood a very sorrow the tear taste is salty when you are happy when it is coming out it becomes sugar sugar is there glucose is there do you have any experimental evidence on that not yet but the people there argue in the both sense okay have you ever tasted that your tears no that's the real lysosome lighting enzymes lighting no you never i did <laughs> <laughs> but all of them look salty but it's not sugar in it okay unless otherwise you have to test in a diabetes patients and then check it out <laughs> okay okay there there are some non invasive technique they used to test the tear drops and then they are checking for the blood glucose uh, level that's one research is going on on that side so that they can monitor instead of poking the needle every time instead ask them to cry a bit <laughs> and then get the tear and then you can do it so, so that's another part okay coming to our class now lysosomes they are um in the light microscope you have the lysosomes they are not seen generally not seen okay generally okay but when you look into leukocytes or the white blood cells you can see a granules uh for those who are taking the histology lab either here in sugarland as well as in victoria if you see under the microscope uh, some of the granules which you can see in the uh, in victoria as well you know under the microscope light microscope you will see in the rbc will pro uh, uh, we are a color of uh, a gray color granules and that is mainly due to the presence of lysosomes in that one, okay the electron microscope if you see the lysosomes they are the single membrane single membrane bound single membrane bound because it is ready to lyse and it is uh, also is no oval shape okay with sacs of enzymes sacs of enzymes inside something like if this is a lysosome is a oval shape and uh, you will get like this yes sir you know small it's not all of them but individually these enzymes see these are the green color which i am just giving there and they are the granules if you see the microscope individually these are, are the sac so they may have the uh, one type of enzyme or and there are there are lot of en enzymes there hydrolytic proteolytic lytic means is lysis hydro means you know it gives the hydrogen bond it lysis on the hydrolysis on the proteolytic is a protein you know uh, also if a alpha glucosidic so it's a carbohydrates carbohydrates so all of them they break these enzymes will break carbohydrate protein and hydrolysis as well as they can also do the lipolysis with the lipid okay lipases so most of these enzymes are phospholipases in that sense you know with the phospholipid me uh, uh, metabolism of the membrane it will break down so this is more of a of a defense service so imagine if these sacs are present in the cell suppose this is the cell and nucleus and 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 these uh, uh, lytic enzymes are floating in the cytoplasm what is the what is the effect if it is freely floating we don't want do you need uh, criminals and uh, uh, the peoples uh, of uh, you know on 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 the road are free 
So the police will capture them, put them in a jail, in a content, containment. So they don't want to the terrorists and criminals are freely moving in the country. No. Like that these guys are more of lighting, more dangerous, violent persons, these sacks. So they put it in a sack, individual prisons, and keep it in a big prison like that. Keep it there, individual cells. So when, when there is a time is released and these guys will come and they're killed, they not only kill the foreign particles or the invaders, they also kill the normal cells, just like our criminals. They kill, they don't care, they take a gun, they shoot everybody in the streets. That is a bit dangerous because of that mentality of the mind. Like that, these enzymes are too dangerous in the cells. They have to contain in a particular fashion inside the cell. So the lysosomal membrane or the prison wall, they keep all these things inside the cell and, and they are they are present and extensively in the white cells. The white blood cells, which contain, as I mentioned before, it is a soldiers of the body or the blood and white blood cells, they have the ammunition of these like uh, like enzymes, like a bomb like thing, you know, so it keep it there. So that's one of the things which we studied in immunology class and uh, innate immunity. So I just I want to make sure the lysosome plays a major role in defense mechanism or the lysis or the metabolism which is taking place inside the cell, okay? Um, some of the drugs are during the inflammatory process, okay, just I'm going to the pathology now, like uh, inflammation, during what is inflammation? If you have a tissue injury, you know, histology, you know about the tissue in the tissue injury process. Okay, so you have uh, the, uh, you have any bacterial invasion, suppose this is the tissue, it's going on, this is the tissue, here, and this is your the blood vessels, and these are the cells, if there's an injury which is occurring here, where you have bacterial invasion, so this bacteria and then uh, getting into the tissue where you have a uh, mast cells and we will study in during our connective tissue chapter of extensively of this uh, mechanism. Mast cells will have a granule which have a release histamine that will dilate the blood cells and the blood cells where you escape or the white blood cell or leukocytes will come out and that labelize the lysosome, the membrane which is, uh, which is being uh, swelling as well as it is a more labile, made fragile, will break down and the lysosomal will break down and the enzymes are released and now the enzymes are a direct attack on this bacteria and thereby the first line of defense in our system. So lysosome plays a major role and it present in a sense in an inactive form to start with but once this membrane is out then it will come and fight. So this Lysosome is majority which cells? More of a defense cells and some other cells which will uh, actively engage in metabolism of carbohydrates and, and proteins and lipids. And so it also present in those lines of tissues. Okay. Now, let's go into the next one. Centriole. Centrioles. What is sentry? You know about sentry? You know, S E N T. Sentry is a, is a protection and, you know, it's a guard, sentry guard or something like that. But it, they, it's entirely different. This is a centriole, which is present in the uh, light microscope. You can see that one. Like a two types of ovoide, that's oval shaped or rod shaped. Two oval shaped or rod shaped. They are present in near the nucleus near nucleus. Why I am saying this, this uh, document camera or whatever which I am giving to you, I am going to ask questions from this for your exam if I said so, okay. So if I said the centriole lysosomes and whatever we discuss in the class in this uh, document camera, if you are taking the note, please take down in a summarize and then submit you know, as a homework along with your PowerPoints and everything, okay. So this will help you. Okay, this uh, where it present it near the nucleus and in the electron microscope, if you see and the two compact cylinders, it looks like an electron microscope because the electron microscope you are really magnifying, magnifying, right? Electron in, in thousands and thousands of times, thousands to 
ten thousands times. But here you get the four times, or maybe ten times, maybe a hundred times only you can do on the light microscope. More than that, you have to depend upon the electron microscope. If you do the electron microscope, the ovoid rod shape looks like a cylinder, compact cylinders, compact cylinders, okay. And they have, how many they can see on nine units, nine units of that cylinders. And then each one, each uh, cylinder is made up of three microtubules, microtubules. I can s draw like this, like a cylinder. This is the one cylinder. Okay, this is the cylinder, and this is made up of nine units, like a one, another two, another three, another four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. So all of them, okay, nine. These are nine units. That each unit will have. I'm just writing each unit will have three microtubules. One tubules, two tubules and three. So these are the microtubules I'm writing it. So total how many microtubules? Nine times three? You will have twenty seven twenty seven microtubules. In other words, M I C R O T U B U L E S, okay, microtubules. In other words, the centrioles made up of twenty seven microtubules using these compact cylinders, okay. What is the purpose of the centrioles? Now the next part. In the cell, we draw a cell, nucleus, okay, and the centrioles are present over here. There are two ovoid structure. And in, during the mitosis process, okay, the centrioles, one of them will, will migrate over here, the opposite side, and then the, the chromosomes and, you know, which, which is getting on the lined up, a nuclear membrane is degrade, and then the chromosomes will be migrated. And from the centrioles, what you get, you have a spindle fibers will be formed, right? So these are the microtubules. And then here the a pair of the chromosomes, the divide, division, at different stages of uh, uh, cell division, and then eventually, the next stage, and this chromosome will move on, move on here, right? So I'll, I'll draw on that. Another picture where this function of centriole will do. This is one, this is another centriole, another centriole, spinal fibers, chromosomes attached to it. So they are going to the one direction, right? So anaphase into the teleophase where, you know, you have got uh, the separation of the chromosome. So you will get uh, another nucleus and then another nucleus and then you have a cell division which is occurring. So it plays a major role. The centrioles plays a major role in a cell division. And uh, this is uh, probably that called as a mitosis. Mitosis or mitosis on that part. This plays a major uh, uh, drug discovery organal. In other words, mitosis is more in mitosis the the function of the cell division, which is occurring more in in uh, cancer cells. So the people on the pharmaceutical industries and biologists and and everyone is looking to cut out this one are the centriole or microtubule formation. If you, if you inhibit these microtubules, then you are inhibiting the cell division and thereby you can find a drug for cancer. So that's the another uh, pathological significance of this particular organism. They are doing it, okay? So what do you inhibit? Uh, yes, uh, centriole function. Uh, spindle fiber, they call it spindle fiber. We will see that one, spindle fibers in a bit later. Okay. Now, the next uh, organelle or the cytoplasmic organelle is peroxisomes. Peroxisomes. In the light microscope, you will not see, not seen. Peroxisome, you cannot see. In the electron microscope, EM, yes, you can see that as a, I guess, spherical. 
spherical or ovoid, ovoid shape. And uh, it's a location. It's widely distributed in the cell, widely, not uh, near the nucleus, near the membrane. Or, so it is present everywhere in the cytoplasm, widely distributed in the cell. Okay. And the, uh, if you do histochemical staining, it's been stained by, if you, if you want to see, stained by uh, some uh, positive reaction for diamino benzidine. Benzi B E N Z I D I N E benzidine reaction. Okay. It has a peculiar reaction like an oxidative reaction. Oxidative reaction. Which one? The peroxisomes. Peroxisome will have an oxidative reaction. How it produces more of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide. Peroxidase is the enzyme, peroxides. So the peroxisomes full of peroxidase enzyme, this enzyme will produce more of hydrogen peroxide, and this hydrogen peroxide will eventually will give rise to uh, uh, H2, uh, I can put like a, a H plus ions and OH minus ions, it will produce just like a water, but you have an additional hydrogen, which is uh, of more of free radicals. So you can uh, get the peroxy radical, I can call it like a peroxy radical, HOO minus. Okay. So uh, this peroxide are, are additional oxygen, you know, like OH and then another uh, oxygen together. It is a more of a um, highly reactive, highly reactive and free radical. What this will do, it will go directly and attack of, um, of more uh, of bacterial membrane, bacterial membrane. And thereby it can destroy. So it it does a good job as a as a protective or a defense mechanism. Protective as well as in a defense in our cells. So the tissue or the white cells are uh, some of the you know, polymorphonucleus uh, nucleus cells, uh, PMN cells are the white blood cells, or lymphocytes, or monocytes, and all those they have this peroxy radical producing peroxisomes that are uh, normally present to, to prevent the invasion of bacteria or virus or any other particle getting into the system. And, and it produce of the peroxide radical is the one which will do the defense. This is the normal defense mechanism. Sometimes if it acts in a normal process if the excess of peroxides in your system that affect the normal pro process of cell division and that induces division that induces a mutation as well so you have to be very careful so it should be kept intact it should not be aggravated in by any other means you know it should be always checked the levels of peroxides in our system. Peroxy nitrate, another uh, nitric oxide uh, free radical, that's all the damage our system. So we have to uh, keep the peroxisomes you know, in place now. So that's another organelle. Then we have uh, next one is microtubules. Microtubules. Light microscope, you will not see, not seen in the light microscope, but it present in a, um, as a cluster, you can see that, not individually you cannot see it, but cluster, if they combine together, cluster, when do you get it? During mitotic, mitotic spindle fibers, spindle, S-P-I-N-D-L-E, spindle, okay, 
you will see as a cluster or a bundle, a bundle of spindle present there during mitosis. That you can see by a light microscopy. And then electron microscopy, you get this scattered throughout the cell. These microtubules are scattered. Mainly they are as a cytoskeleton, right? Cyto skeleton, which I mentioned earlier last class as well. This is supposed to be the nucleus and this is the cell and the microtubules is everywhere. You know, so you can you can see that one here. So, so individually. So but in light microscope you cannot see except you have a bundle of the uh, mitotic. But in the electron microscope you even get thin sections because you are magnifying thousands of times you can see scatter pattern. You can see that. What function the microtubule will do? If you see this, when suppose a, a, a molecule will move from, from near the nucleus to the cell membrane, these microtubules will assist or help. Help transport like a railroad, okay? Or, or you can have a regular road where the motor car passing like a freeway. So, these are the freeway of the cells where it helps the transport of molecule from location 1 to 2. It helps the transport. Also, it, it, it pulls the uh, 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 chromosome from both ends and that helps in the mitosis. So, as I mentioned earlier, there is a drug called colchicine, C-O-L-C-H-I-C-I-N-E, colchicine. Colchicine is the drug which will inhibit inhibit the protein tubulin. Tubulin, T U B U E L I N, tubulin. Tubulin is the one which will uh, form of uh, the microtubule. The microtubule is made up of large amount of tubulin protein. So, if you inhibit this protein synthesis by colchicine, you are inhibiting the microtubule formation. If you inhibit the microtubule formation, the, then you will inhibit the mitotic spindle formation. If you inhibit the mitotic spindle, then you inhibit, inhibit the cell division. So, if you inhibit the cell division, especially in cancer, then you find the drug. So, drug which will inhibit the mitotic spindle formation through this uh, tubulin inhibition, that's an uh, anti-cancer drug. The cancer is uncontrolled growth of a tissue. So, in histology, a part of the histology, we are discussing about the cancer because uh, certain type of cells will abnormal growth, that is the cancer. So, cancer itself is a cancer biology. Some of your students, they have taken uh, summer time cancer biology class. Have you taken some of you? So, you have studied about the individual tissues. So, now you are studying about the tissues and the mechanism of how the tissue will grow um, in the sense with the mitosis. So, if you inhibit the spindle fibers through the drug and then you can stop the cell division. That's a microtubule plays a major role like a centrioles. Any questions on this part? No. Okay, next one is the seven is fibril. I got fibrils. Whatever fibrils in the cytoplasm are in the cell or the tissue, in the light microscope you will not see. They are not seen inside the cell, not seen inside the cell. Just mention, remember, not seen inside the cell. Uh, this is the example, fibril example, it's collagen, I am talking about collagen, collagen, collagenous fibril, collagenous fibrils, just not seen inside the cell, but the fibroblast, other cells which secrete the protein outside the cell, suppose this is the cell and this nucleus, this will secrete, so you will find the collagen fiber which is going over there. So, it is not inside the cytoplasm, but it is outside the fibril because it is a secretor protein which is present outside. 
and it has a unique the, in the electron microscope. If you see the electron microscope of collagenous fibers, uh, it will arrange a parallel rows. Arrangement is a parallel rows of proteins. Okay, and uh, the the width of this fibril. I'll write in a separate one. Suppose this is the normal one, um, but when when uh, when the when when this when the animal or the person become aged, one, what happened? I'm just drawing in a large. It's one single fibril. Okay, this is one unit of fibril. This is the this is the nascent one or the young one. So the young person looks like a thin collagen fibril. When the person getting old, 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 or the aging, aging process, or old persons, which is getting out these collagen fibrils become thick. So, when you see a tissue under the microscope, you don't know the person's age or anything. At the same time, if you uh, happen to stain them as collagen fibers and note, if they're thin, like a baby, and if it uh, grows and the, you know, if you go out of the age of progress, you get a uh, thick, the collagen fibers become <coughs> thick collagen fibers. So that's indication of the aging process. Okay. And this is present mainly the collagen present in connective tissue. Connective tissue. The previous uh, some of the subcellular organs, which are microtubules and uh, you know more of the cell division process and mitochondria is the present mostly of metabolic process uh, tissues, and some of them are uh, the lysosomes are more or mostly present in the more uh, defensive mechanism or white blood cells like this the connective tissues they have the fibrils they are present more so each tissues it may vary you know the type of uh, uh, sub subcellular organelles okay the next one go on the myofibrils myofibrils what is the structure of myofibrils electron micros I mean uh, can we see under the light microscope? Yes, we can see in the light microscope like a cylinder, cylindrical columns, C O L U M N columns. Okay, and then electron microscope. Each myofibril has about uh, you know each one is made up of one thousand to 2,000 myofilaments, myofilaments, okay. So it looks like a cylindrical column, but each fiber, you have uh, thousands of uh, myofilaments, something like a like, like, like this is a myofiber, right? I'm just writing it, okay? These are the myofibrils. Imagine these are uh, thousands and thousands are present in a, that thing. And then it is being one myofibril, just with a, a red. This one myofibril, one myofibril will produce uh, a thousand, two thousand myofilament. These are the myofilaments. The myofilaments. This is uh, one myofibril. Okay, and these myofilaments again. There are two types of myofilaments. Okay, two types of myofilaments. Myofilaments, two types. One is the thick one, which is called actin. Uh, sorry, uh, myosin. Thick is. Myosin, M -A -Y -O -S -I -N, M-Y-O-S-I-N, myosin. Second type is thin. One is actin. So, two types of myofilaments. One is the thick myosin and thin is the actin. Actin and myosin. These, ma these filaments is alternate and these arrangements that constitute and the function of this myofibril. Where do you find this myofibril? What is the action of actin and myosin? I think you have studied with the earlier classes. 
it it uh, it constitute in the muscle, right? Or the uh, they can have the filaments can contractible ability, contract and relax. Where do you find the contract and relax? The muscle tissue. So the muscle tissue in the histology, if you say muscle tissue, immediately your mind should go in myo filaments or myofibril. Muscles is made up of myofibril, yum, 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 like a muscle made up of myofibril. Myofibril is made up of myofilaments and myofilaments made up of actin. There are two types of myofilaments that are actin and myosin. Muscle tissue made up of myofibrils and myofibrils is made up of uh, myofilaments and there are two types of myofilaments. This one is the actin, another one is the myosin. Okay, follow? And this main function is the contractable ability. So we did study on the connective tissue, yes, fibrils and collagen fibrils on the one side and connective tissue and myofibrils which is a constitution of muscle tissue. You follow? So each cell type, each type of cell, they have its own characteristic of a particular tissue. You should follow, if you follow that rational, then histology is a piece of cake. It's not a big difficult to digest. It's easy to understand. Okay. Any questions? Victoria? No questions? Okay. Cinco Ranch? You follow? Okay. Now, the another fibril which is present in the neurons or the nervous system like neurofibril. N E E U R O neurofibrils. And the uh, light microscope, delicate thread like thing, delicate thread like structure in the nerve cell, neuron, nerve cells, neurofibril. And the electron microscope, what you will find a bundle bundles of neurofilaments. Neurofibril is made up of neuro, N-E-U-R-O, filaments, F-I-L-A, filaments, neurofilaments. Okay. And they are present in the location where you get the location of the cell or tissue. Where do you find in the tissue? In the perikaryon, perikaryon, and also dendritis, dendritis, you will see that one in a structure, and also axons. If you see the, okay, <coughs> of, uh, this is the axon, nucleus, so these are the dendrites, D for dendrites, so these are the dendrites, that's also made up of neurofibril, axons, these are axons, which is present over there, axons. And perikaryon, which is a, uh, uh, generally is a covering sheath here, which is also made up of the neurofibrils, okay. And these are the best developed, they are developed in the large neurons, you can see clearly, large neuron, large neural cells. And they do not branch, very significant, do not branch out this neurofibril. And they also they present in the cytoskeletons of the cells. Neurofibrils also present, suppose in a cell, it is not only present in the nerve cell, the neurofilaments also present in some other cells also. Without branch, the cells, neurofilaments, okay, normal cells. Neurofilaments present in the cytoplasm as well, inside the cell. Okay, and sometimes what happens in the neurons as well as the other cells, when there is a cell getting injury, any injury or the cell getting agitation, is getting angry with some other system like a heat or cold or uh, any other system, you are disturbing that particular cell, then the cell immediate thing is so sensitive, 
So neurofilament is disintegrate. These things will, will, you will not see that one. Disintegrate. Disintegrate during injury. So, you, this is another diagnostic feature of a particular system. If the uh, liver cell injury or, or uh, intestinal cell injury or kidney cell injury or any toxic effect or anything, like chemical injury, which is happening in the system, if you get that histological sections, if you stain this, some of these uh, neurofilaments or neurofibril, if they disintegrate, when compared to the normal one, you can easily say, hey, this is being a sensitive to injury, cell injury. So they are sensitive. So sensitive. When compared to your other, other, other organelles, okay, other fibrils, this is so sensitive, you will not see the injured cell or injured tissue. So in that way, we can easily distinguish from the normal as well as the abnormal cells. Okay. Another one is the cytoplasmic inclusions. Cytoplasmic inclusions. Sorry. Inclusions. Cytoplasmic inclusions. So, this uh, example, there are several, uh, just I'm giving one of the lipid droplets. Lipid droplets, meaning the cell, which this is the nucleus, uh, normal cell, you get the cytoplasm. But, but what happened, these droplets, this round one which I'm drawing here, are droplets. Initially, they, it, it stored all the triglyceride, all the fat molecules, which is stored in these droplets. Eventually, it will fuse together, and then finally, an adipose tissue will form with a large one packing of the vacuoles, where you have a droplets here, and you get the nucleus at the end, uh, at, the, at the periphery of the membrane, and this is nucleus. Initially, the nucleus is here, but when these droplets fused together and form a big, large, uh, like a balloon-like thing, and then it will expand, expand all the storage of lipid, and then uh, it push the nucleus one side, and, 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 and thereby this tissue we call is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue. Whenever you eat a lot of, uh, you know, fat as well as the carbohydrates, and they don't to dispose immediately, but it is uh, it is stored in a in, in, in a lipid droplets and eventually getting an adipose tissue. They are, um, are reversible in the sense if you do a lot of exercise, if you have any metabolic need and more, it can easily break down and then it can shrink. So that's the good part. Whenever if you do reduce your body weight and other things and people they always talk about the exercise and eating the diet and and I don't believe all those uh, you know the drug or therapy which is you are eating and thereby you know you can eat whatever you want at the same time you can reduce the weight no that's dangerous part okay so this one is uh, merely of the exercise that will stimulate certain type of hormones and everything and this can be reversible so that's why we can uh, we can make use of that part so this is present in the fetus, several droplets, and then uh, fetus is having more of cushion. So this is more useful in uh, keeping the fetus in shape. Okay. What I'll do, I'll give you a break now, uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll be back, and then we will go through the epithelial tissue on chapter 2. Okay, any questions? Any questions, Victoria? Sinkorang? No? So those who came late, you can uh, just uh, tell me your name so that I can register your name here.
Dr. Soma. Dr. Soma. Yes. Uh, Stephanie Gurnell. Uh, from Cinco. Cinco, Stephanie. And Ashazia. Uh, just a second. Uh, just getting on Victoria. Yes, Stephanie, Shashia. Anybody? That's all. That's all? You're Iqbal? Meridia? Uh, no. No. Okay. Okay. Be fine. Merci.
Okay. Like it on the blackboard. They're yes. Really, really small. Yes. What do you have to do? Um, you have to increase the uh, um, the magnification. Like if you go here, two hundred percent. Uh -huh. Do that. Yeah. If you increase it, then. Okay. okay. Okay, I'll come back and we will go on to the uh, figures of the figure of the chapter one. If you go onto your blackboard, you get the uh, lecture one and figure PDF, which I am going now. But also, if you have a uh, Java uh, download, you can see the pictures as well or figures in individually. Uh, but this is the PDF, so you may not see any colored one. This is the general cells about it. And uh, find this a membrane. Other proteins are present in the membranes, and and this is the lipid bilayer membrane, which I explained to you last class, uh, the mechanism, and then how the uh, hydrophilic region, which is up, and uh, and then here is the bottom one, and but this protein, and where the pores, where you know, the pores are there, right? So these are the peripheral protein, and then the transmembrane proteins, and the proteins are, uh, you know, if we like they are present uh, in, in the sense they are sticking together, right? If you zip off this membrane to the outer membrane, then inner membrane, you can see you know, how the proteins are present in the membrane, biological membrane. Okay, and this is again the modification of biological membrane with a uh, with the microvilli, the intestinal cells. That's the plasma membrane again. This mitochondria. That we explained just now, and this is the electron micrograph uh, of uh, of the mitochondria. This is the outer membrane, and then inner membrane. This is again inside the mitochondria. What happened? I mean, how it looks like the electron transport chain, where the ATP synthesis is there. The, all of them available in your uh, uh, blackboard. Okay, I'm just uh, just for you for your information. So I have a question about the yes. Homework. It says in there that it's due at 10 o'clock, which is late for today, so is that going to... Yeah, it, it will, if you, as long as, you know, if you submit a late, it will show you a late assignment, so I will note on that. But it'll be okay, though, it's not okay. It's okay, it's okay, but, for, but hereafter I will not, I will allow for a couple of weeks for the late assignment, after that you will get, a re you can submit late, but you will get reduced grade, that's it. Right. So I'm not saying no, yeah. but yes. Yeah, today, yeah, I'm not, I am, I'm not taking off any grades. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, you can see this one is, uh, you can see how the uh, lipofusion and, and all the lysosome, how the mechanism, how it looks like. It's buttering off. Okay. So these are microtubules, the arrangement of microtubules and spindle fibers here. Then how the, uh, the metaphase, all these, the arrangement, you can see the bundle of sticks together. And these are the neurons and neurofibrils and cilia and cytoskeleton. So we will see uh, all these cells uh, uh, typically in a, a, with reference to the tissues. Okay? Let's see that. Now let's go on to the next lecture. On to the lecture two. Uh, it's not coming up either. Download here. I'm just going on. Could you see clearly from Chico Ranch, Victoria? Do you follow? All right. So the tissues is the one with the general tissues and then we are going on individual tissues, okay? General tissues means the aggregation of similar cells to perform one common function. I have a question. Yes. Are we responsible for the rest of uh, the other half of the chapter? Yes. Okay. They're done? Uh, which other part? Oh, the, the nucleus and other things. Yes, yes, you are you are responsible for that one. Rest of the thing because I'm going to highlight certain features, how to study and how to comprehend. That's what we are going to discuss. Otherwise, you can read your PowerPoints, right? 
there's the, any questions you can ask me in the class. That's all. But rest of the things there is very easy for that to follow. Yes, Do question. They follow the chapters like lecture two will be chapter two. Yes. Okay. According to syllabus, we have to start chapter two today. Okay. So I'll start. Uh, probably I might halfway through before the class ends. I'll continue the next class, but as per the thing I want to follow strictly. Because like when I read chapter one, uh -huh. most of it was the, just the nucleus. Yeah, uh, not nucleus, but to the cytoplasm and the membrane and yeah, everything. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. right. Exactly. You will find the nucleus, but I'm not going to the nucleus in detail now, right? Now, because already we covered m most of the stuff. Nucleus is the one, the chromo chromatin there, chromosome there and then go some other chromosome, abnormal chromosomes yeah, and, and those things, yes. Okay. You study that, I mean, absolutely, because uh, for your multiple choice questions, for your exams, that those questions will come. That's what I supplement with the, with the blackboard. Because blackboard, you can study at any time in your thing. Also, multiple choice questions also available. You can study the PowerPoints and answer those questions and practice your exam. Absolutely necessary. I'm not going word by word and, and all this topic. I am going to discuss highlight of certain tissues and that will help you to understand the subject easily. Because I don't want to waste your time and my time and you know instead we can do more when you that's what exactly I want to give the PowerPoints already into your blackboard. And not worry about any other things. And if you type and submit a, an assignment, everything that will help you. So you will get additional information in this class, okay? So, when you go into um, the tissues, the chapter 2, okay, chapter 2, tissues. Tissues is an aggregation of the cells. We have studied cell type, like uh, there are different type of cells, right? We did study about uh, a normal cell, normal cells of... Um, um, like a cell which is a, a square cell, a round cell, okay, and some of them are a long, uh, a columnar cells, some of the cells are like that, and some of the cells are going, the shape of the cells like this, spindle fiber, some of them which is going on, uh, on, on, on like this rectangular, like this horizontal, like it will go, some of them, the cells will go like this, coming over here, then here, nucleus, here is the nucleus, and here this nucleus, and here nucleus, nucleus, and here the nucleus, nucleus. And some of the cells, they have um, like a ciliary things like uh, cilia, which is present. And some of the cells, you have got a modification of a, a, a um, micro, uh, microvilli, right, in the nucleus here. So you find this is from the intestine, and then here you can cilia, and this is from the trachea, and they are the smooth muscle cells, and they are the cardiac muscle cells here, and skeletal muscle, and this is the neuron, and here the normal columnar epithelial cells are probably in present the kidney, and these are the white blood cells. And then you also you have a, a another type of cells, which is a, a, with no nucleus, but you have a RBC red blood cells, okay. These are other uh, cuboidal cells, so they are cubical, like cubic. If you see, the cells are individually, it may vary, but they have uh, a required function, specific function. For example, these vascular smooth muscle cells, it looks like this. Some of them are the endothelial cells, which is a flattened cells. It goes like this, and it gives a covering of a particular organ. Suppose this is a, a organ number one, it cover everything. So what we have, whatever the covering and some of the cells are lining. See, this is the tubular structure of a tube, you know, for the duct or something. Some of the cells are present in the lining, that's the inner, the inner lining of the cells. Some cells are like something like a monolayer of this. So if you say aggregation of the cells means these are cuboidal cells like that, the many cuboidal cells form a particular tissue. And the cells of white cells like a round and white shape, it have, it's, it's, it, uh, this type of cells, they have their own functions. And then the ciliary, where it will act more of ciliary, it will move. So this is another type of cells. And then here the uh, 
increasing the absorbed surface the area for example in, in the micro um, uh, here the microvilli microvilli so increasing absorbed sur surface area in the intestine and then we have another type of cells cells are made up of all these cells with uh, with with the muscle cells so if you see if i say cell means it is a dump i don't know what type of, i have to specify you are a biologist if you are learning histology if you say hey i know the about a cell no don't say like that cell you have to specify what type of cell is it a neuron is a muscular cell or absorptive cell or ciliary cell or any secretory cell or glandular cells so that itself the functionally functionally linked to that particular cell you make sense okay suppose if i say a muscle means a muscle cell they are made up of muscle cell and what is function of the muscle cell contractibility it will contract and relax correct see so the contraction how the contraction is taking place in the muscle cells so you have to do the myofibrils and myofilaments and then myofilaments actin and myosin myofilaments that's getting into your mind straight away the same thing with the neurofibrils neurons and present in the nerve cells how the nerve cell looks like immediately you have to you have to recollect in your mind getting into his hey, neurons looks like a starry things and it have a multipolar there are different types of uh, neuron nerve cells a unipolar bipolar and uh, a multipolar neuron different types so we will study individually in our the whole class but here in the general introduction i am just uh, giving aggregation of similar cells to perform one common function all glandular cell to form secretion all muscular cells aggregate together for a muscular contraction all neurons to constitute to form brain as well as the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system to perform the conduction of sensory senses right and then if you how they join together next part is how the cells are joining as as, as i mentioned before cells aggregation okay cell aggregation okay how the cells aggregation one cell this is another cell this cell number 1 cell number 2 and cell number 3 okay in all which i mentioned earlier all these cells it goes everything put together okay how all these cells how these cells they joined together in other words how they rivet you know what is the rivet in the metallic things we have the welding and, and riveting in two different metals and put together join together like a glue how many of you heard of uh, the glue of gorilla glue or or type of cement or a different type of glue right but sometime they claim it fixed but it won't after a few months it will come up right the glue because they have to buy again you know for this so the gluing of how the one cell is gluing the another one what is the membrane architecture what is responsible for that we will study that one they are called as a tight junction tj is for occluding o c c l u d i n g occluding tight junctions and also they also anchor anchor you know what is anchor how many of you having a boat or uh, the ship anchor at the shore like that one cell and the next cell will anchor with their protein with the another one anchoring we call it as adherence the protein call ad herens adherens or desmosomes desmosomes okay also these cells will will linked to each other or join together with a with a communication with a gap there's a gap in between there we have communication how the cells will communicate with each other this cell communicate this this cell communicate this this communicate that so each cell may vary but in general as i mentioned muscle tissue they joined one type of fashion nerve tissue one type of fashion so each one will use one of these glue to stick to it and thereby one cell many cell many cell to join together using this gluing protein to form a tissue have you got it yes how one cell become many cells become a tissue 
because in the in the the histology when you see under the microscope you are not going to concentrate one particular cell no you are going to collective cells you may have a yeah, collective of the cells you have one type of cells like this and one okay and then another type of cells which is coming and then another type of cells which is coming out so when you see you get a mess of a lot of mess we see under the microscope in a particular tissue or organ you have to figure it out what is that cells individually what is this type of cell what is the fibers what is going on straight line what the collagen where the where the endothelial cells are coming out where it gives uh, white cells are coming out of the blood cells to protect the body or the bacteria so you have to give a comprehensive knowledge at that time i want to see on that complex pattern i want to break it down into small one by one so now we reached in a point the collection of cell form a tissue you will get many many tissues this is one type of tissues then another type of tissue another type of tissue and another type of tissue and constitute one organ okay organ okay so cell individually and then form a tissue and then tissue become the organ and then the organ many organs together organ organ many organ to form organism 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 the whole animal or or the being a particular person and then function we have to study an organismal physiology or we can call comparative physiology in our class in some other a uh, university they call it the organized uh, organism physiology organismal physiology they used to call it okay and we are studying now we are here so we are studied in different type of cell and tissues and then uh, organ we will see in the individual systems in our class but we are not studying this physiology but we will study one or two uh, typical functions but that's all but but the tissues we are going to find out one by one tissue we are going to see what is an epithelial tissue in one side and then connective tissues in the, and another muscle tissues another blood tissues and then we are going to see bone tissues so so we are going to see the individual tissues in this class are you follow i'm just giving an introduction i have not started the class yet but just i am giving an introduction where we are now on to the next level on the tissues okay the next one the tissues is made up of as i mentioned before in your powerpoint also i have given like a primary tissues what are the primary tissues but one epithelial epithelial tissue and then second connective tissue third muscle four nervous tissue neuron tissues are the building blocks of the tissue of the organs so that's what we have studied a bit earlier and then now we are going to concentrate on the epithelial tissues epithelium there are different types of epithelial tissues over there okay where do you find epithelium i'm giving some introduction then i'm going to give uh a uh, a short summary uh of this whole epithelial tissues uh with some show and tell some figures and then we will see that one okay epi what is epi epi means cover right also it goes on on the covering as an outside this cover this one outside and here you get the inside you got the all the tissues the the other tissues so the covering the layer it is called like a epithelium epithelium there are different types of epithelium tissues we will see that one and it also form inner lining otherwise this is the epithelium is cover covering covering layer outside outside cover also inside lining inside lining of the organs like a inside lining of cavity 
for example, um, if you have a peritoneal cavity, that's on abdomen. We have studied a little bit in our uh, in our lab peritoneal cavity. That what type of yesterday we studied peritoneal cavity? What type of uh, epithelium? Simple squamous squamous S Q S U M O U S squamous epithelium. As we studied yesterday in the lab, okay. Peritoneal cavity is a one single layer of that particular squamous epithelium, which is a, a different type of cells. So you have the epithelium itself, it have different types of cells, or different types of tissue in the epithelium. That is divided into, okay, peritoneal, pleural cavity, and pericardial. Pleural is for the lungs, right? thoracic and then pericardium. Pericardium is the covering of heart. This is for your lung. So this covering membrane is made up of epithelium. Okay. And uh, the one which is on the blood vessels, blood vessels. Suppose this is a blood vessel which is going on. Okay. And the the inner lining of uh, of this, what is called another layer of cells, these cells, inner lining, they are called endothelium. Endothelium. Epithelium is outside the cover. Endothelium, which is present inside the lining of that. Okay. And uh, uh, some of the cells which, is, uh, which form as a parenchymal cells which is found in the gland, uh, that is called glandular epithelium. Let's put on that one. Parenchymal cells. Parenchymal cells, they are present in a gland, call it as a glandular. So we call it as a glandular epithelium. Epithelium. So the glandular epithelium, what the gland will do? It will secrete. Secrete hormone, enzymes and everything. And then here the endothelium, which will protect so that the blood can pass through on that one. Okay. And the cavity again to protect from the outside, you know, all the another type of epithelial cells which we can uh, we can we can study um, like a columnar epithelium which looks like a column columnar which is a inner lining of intestine suppose this is the intestine and then this, this lining these these cells i'm just i'm drawing uh, uh, my uh, villus and then this villus or villi here this this finger like thing and then you have a microvilli here so they form as a columnar epithelium. So this columnar epithelium will do what is the function? Absorption. Absorption and, and there are a certain type of protein which is sticking on this thing. See these are red one mark or the protein which will do absorption or metabolites like a glucose, protein and uh, lipids and and especially for uh, uh, bile acids, so it will absorb and then getting into the system, it is getting into the system. So it will do its own function. A type of epithelium, a columnar epithelial cells are the tissues, and that will absorb and then transport into the blood. So, so these transporting proteins which are present here, which I mentioned earlier, the membrane they have their own protein, transmembrane proteins, and everything that will do this function here. Now, now let's go on to uh, some of uh, the tissues. Think in your textbook, which uh, is not available, but I, I think these figures are already available in your uh, blackboard. But I'm just I'm going through a little bit. Do you see that? Uh, 
Okay. Right. Great. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, nervous tissue. All these are the primary tissues. If I ask the question of what are the primary tissues, you could remember these all four. And what these functions? They serve as a common function. Each one will have a common function. Why they the division of labor? If they don't want to give all of them doing all the function, then nobody is doing good job. That's why the mechanic should do mechanic shop, cook should cook shop, hat dressers do the hair cutting. So you should have a different types of uh, profession. So you cannot expect everybody will know everything. Then uh, they will know nothing. You know, so you have to have a proper division of labor. That's what our system will do. If the secreting cells is all in a sudden will take over the job of a protein synthesis instead of uh, protein secretion, instead of a, uh, a hormone, it's wrong. Wrong protein at wrong time mean that is a mad tissue or mad cells, meaning that is going to be an abnormal cell, then the disease process starts. So it, each tissue. We have thousands and different types of cells and uh, t tissue itself we have uh, maybe 10, uh, 10, 20 or 30 different tissues in our body. We expect that cell to do its own function. If we change its shapes, if it is not doing its proper function, then that's the problem. So how to identify that wrong doing? Then the cells whenever they are doing a wrong, they, they behave erratically their morphology, the cells will go mad and they will dance and they will go, they won't stick to that particular place, it will migrate in some other place. All on a sudden, if you see a kidney cell in a liver, what will happen? A cancer which is start in the liver, they're all on a sudden that migrate into the colon, then you express some protein which is expressed from the liver into the colon, means colon cells are present in the, uh, I mean, liver cells are present in the colon. That is not right. That's all about the application of histology applied histology or the functional histology or whatever, pathology, histopathology system. That you will study extensively in a different class. But what we are dealing here in this class is a normal, normal uh, histology about it. Okay. So we will cover all these uh, epithelial tissues and uh, probably on to the next class onwards um, extensively uh, one by one, tissue by tissue. Okay. If you have any question, you can email me or you can call me uh, or if you can ask question in the class. Victoria, do you have any question? No?